already 2023 and we still don't have any word on a new 3D Mario game. Hey, if Mario Odyssey taught us anything, it's that Nintendo absolutely can't be topped when it comes to 3D platformers, so I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. As if anybody else is even making 3D platformers anymore. And I thought 3D Mario wrote itself into a hole before Odyssey. He had this big debut in 64, took a vacation, and even went to space. Nothing spells doom for a franchise more than going to space. Could it even be possible for Mario to outdo all of his past adventures? If movie sequels have taught me anything, that'll be a hard no. We haven't even reviewed Galaxy or 64 yet, but I assure you, Odyssey might just top them both. Here we go. Oh, whoa, look at how amazing it all looks. Not really liking these stupid rabbit things. Oh, this huge open 3D level design is fantastic. Oh, man, the rabbits came back. Mm, and that soundtrack. Come on, I thought I already killed these rabbits like five worlds ago. Don't you just think this has to be the best 3D Mario has ever been? Mm -hmm. Yes. Forget about the stupid bunnies. They even came back in a secret final boss gauntlet. I swear there is no pleasing you. So what do you do with Mario after Flood and the gravity physics of his past adventures to keep the game interesting? You forget all of that and just focus on open 3D platforming fun. Well, there is a new gimmick with the capture mechanic, allowing Mario to temporarily possess all sorts of enemies and objects in order to temporarily utilize their abilities. But the constant flow of new things to possess all over each of the game's kingdoms allow for the 3D platforming to be explored to its fullest. It genuinely plays like a massive sandbox 3D platformer, allowing you the freedom to play it all the way you want. I'm just saying, we all know this game only happened because of of the capture mechanic, considering Nintendo's insistence on gimmicks in each of their sequels as if people wouldn't buy the new Mario game without it. Luckily, the capture mechanic comes off as a fun creative thing you can do that enhances the world instead of detracting from it, you know, like most of Nintendo's dumb gimmicks. Thank God. Just like in 64 Sunshine and Galaxy, Mario has open access to a wide variety of 3D worlds with tons of stars to collect, or rather moons in this case, but instead of being booted out of the world each time he finds one, he just keeps keeps on going until he wants to leave. This little change adds so much more enjoyability and freedom to the world that Mario has yet to achieve. Sucks it took him so long considering a certain Baron Bird had already done this back in 1998. Who cares, it happened. And because of that, Mario can now find a whopping 830 moons hidden absolutely everywhere. And your progression in the story is only tied to your finding a set number of them, aside from defeating a few bosses along the way. So how you progress and what moons you stumble upon are completely up to your own playstyle. I really appreciate that this time it's just about the joy of discovering secrets and having fun with the new creative level design and isn't forcing us to adapt to new gameplay shifting concepts like Flood. Unlike Sunshine and Galaxy, which each have their great and sour moments, Odyssey is always playing to its strengths and every moment feels like its new best. Even Cappy, your new sentient eyeball hat possessing your enemies, adds an extra layer of versatility to Mario, making all sorts of tricky jumps possible just by tossing your hat. The more you play around with Cappy, the more you realize just how fun it is just to control Mario. Yeah, this might be the best 3D Mario has ever been. It's been six years now, we can say it. This is the best 3D Mario game. It's nice to see the fat plumber continuing to one-up himself even though he effectively runs a monopoly on the entire genre. Bless this big beautiful ball of spaghetti. Okay, I admit, I was weirded out at first by the realistic T-Rex and the people too, but once you play it, the game somehow finds a way to make it all work and still feel like 100% authentic Mario. Can someone please explain the difference to Sonic Team before another realistic human girl wants to fool around at the speed of sound on the cartoon hedgehog's Ken doll crotch? Yes, Sonic 06 was a mistake. Can we please just forget it ever happened? Did you know that Sonic 4 actually happened and it's way worse than you could possibly imagine? Mario looks amazing, and so do the many colorful and various kingdoms he gets to explore this time. There's even tons of 2D levels taking place on the textures of the 3D levels that you can wrap in and out of, and that's amazing! Yeah, the graphics all around are astounding, except for those stupid rabbits. You can even buy new themed outfits for the meatball based on the world that you found the appropriate amount of purple coins in, and even more so than Breath of the Wild, dressing up this traditionally outfitted character doesn't diminish his character in any way, and it's actually a ton of fun! Man, I hate the look of those rabbits! Oh, what is so bad about the Brutals? <gasps> They look like they're out of a Sonic game! <laughs> you, you know what, you're right. 
Following in the footsteps of Mario's past absurdity, this game is a big glorious mess, and I love it. So Bowser kidnaps Peach with the intention of marrying her on the moon, but only after assembling the greatest of gifts and preparations for her as possible from each kingdom in the world. Sure, it's kidnapping, but at least he's kinda sweet about it. He's one of those lovable rapists. Peach also has a weird sentient tiara thing like Mario's cappy for some reason, just so that Mario's new hat is also invested in this rescue. But it's really not about the story. It's all about the crazy set piece along the way, like fighting a giant goofy chicken in a massive pot of colorful stew, and racing through the Tundra Olympics as a bouncy overweight seal, and even defeating a medieval dark fantasy dragon. Nobody's gonna care if we talk about story spoilers in a Mario game, right? Like he said, we're like six years late to this party, so you had your chance to play it. Good, because I want to talk about my favorite moments from the entire game, namely the festival in New Donk City, an entire urban kingdom dedicated to Mario's origins in the arcade, and after assembling a jazzy band playing a supremely reimagined NES melody for the mayor Pauline, and yes, that Pauline from the original games, she invites Mario to participate in the city's festival as thanks. Now, coming from a guy whose first ever video game was Super Mario Brothers, this little red jumping guy has a special place in my heart, but I swear nothing could have emotionally prepared me for this festival. Pauline actually performs this new vocal track, Jump Up Superstar, that's absolutely overflowing with nostalgic love for this character who's been on top of the video game world for over 40 years. It's the most endearing celebratory song that genuinely makes me tear up with joy. It's uh, all based on this one game that started all this. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Oh my god! Oh my god, this is awesome! Oh my god, this is great. Oh my god! Oh, it's like Donkey Kong. Oh my gosh, I'm playing Donkey Kong. This is so cool. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, this is so cool! Oh my gosh! I have, I'm like speechless! This is so awesome! Hey, there we go! Whoa! Oh, I'm trying to hear the words too. This is, like, this is so good! Oh my gosh, this is so awesome! Oh my gosh, this is great! Oh my gosh, there's like so much history going up to this point too. I'm like trying to admire just all of that. Whoa! Hey! Oh my god, was that donkey? Oh my god, it's the- I'm like, oh my god! It's the original uh, Donkey Kong level! Oh my gosh, this is so cool! Uh, DK! Oh my gosh, this is so awesome! Oh my god, I wonder how, how many people are like fully, like totally appreciate this. Who've like played from this long. Oh my gosh. Go! Go! Get him! Oh! <laughs> Yes! Oh, it's so cool! I feel like I'm six. I don't even have any commentary. That was just awesome. Oh, uh, we couldn't have done it without your help. Oh, it's like it's on so many levels. That's so nice. Oh, it's so cool. And wow, look at that. The whole thing was recorded in a Let's Play series that you can all totally go watch now, shameless plug. And I thought that was a trip, but the ending is equally fantastic. As Mario crashes the wedding, he defeats Bowser, and as the moon caverns crumble all around him and Peach, he's only left with one possibility of escape. What are we gonna do? Uh... Oh yeah, buddy! You actually see Bowser's memories through all of their past battles before controlling him outright to slash and burn your way to safety while yet another new vocal song, Break Free, Lead the Way, plays. Now, maybe it's just me and my long history with this little red guy and his spiky turtle, but this surprise final level was equally exhilarating and breathtaking. And at the end, it looks like Mario's actually gonna propose to Peach, but in the end, he and Bowser are getting into this silly fight resulting in the princess turning them both down. Of course, because Nintendo would never actually do that, but gosh, if they were ever gonna do it, this would have been the time. This game was perfect. And yes, of course, the big marinara man marrying his fungus princess would have made me cry. Shut up, you probably would have too if these characters have been with you for as long as you could remember. I wouldn't say perfect, because the brutals still exist. Can't we just enjoy a game? I object! Okay, as we clearly couldn't contain ourselves earlier, this soundtrack is absolutely magnificent. Not only that, but the actual sound mixing is extremely well polished, and sound effects and music are wonderful, yes, but I really love the extra care and attention it makes to get your music to start and stop at perfect moments like this.
Like, how do you do that when it led organically from live gameplay not even a minute beforehand? I genuinely have no idea how these wizards managed to do this, but it is awesome. And I'll say it again, the vocal tracks are both so incredible, they elevate the game in such a big way that I can't imagine this game without them. And the rest of the game's composers were all at the top of their game, making multiple versions of each kingdom's tracks for above ground, caves, underwater, and even the retro 8-bit style versions for when you dive into a 2D segment. And even my man Koji Kondo is still making new music for Mario. Wow, we had like zero complaints with this game. You know what this means, Hamster? I hate those rabbits! You never disappoint, do you? Now take this from a guy who loves both of these series equally. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was good and all, but when it comes to the best game of 2017, you simply cannot beat Super Mario Odyssey. If the uninterrupted open 3D kingdoms with over 800 freaking moons thing didn't entice you, this post-game actually has an amazing gauntlet level called the Darker Side, which might just be the most challenging and most satisfying Mario level I have ever played, and all just for your final moon. Oh, it starts with the characters from all of the kingdoms coming together to cheer you on, and features this crazy easy long rush of platforming challenges and even mini bosses all before this final climb up a skyscraper where you and Cappy get to reflect on your amazing journey together and say your goodbyes. It's just Mario saying goodbye to his hat, calm down. This game makes me so happy I want to cry. The positive gamer in me of course lets Super Mario Odyssey capture a 6 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, of course not. It's a 10 out of 10. Easily. This is the best 3D Mario game as well as one of the if not the best 3D platformer ever made. And I want some more, Nintendo. Come on, cough it up. The critical gamer in me can't get over the brutals enough to give Super Mario Odyssey anything higher than a 5 out of 10, considering they're in what feels like half the game. Yeah, of course I'm kidding. It's a 10 out of 10. This game is about as close to perfect as I've ever experienced, and what good is a 10 if not for damn near perfection? But what do you think? Let us know how your positive and critical sides rate Super Mario Odyssey in the comments below. But if you don't think 3D platformers are worth making anymore, even after playing this, then you're just playing with yourself. Now, I know you can't tell from this, it's actually like a bit of a camera illusion, but I actually have to sit like on a lot of pillows on top of a chair to even like be high enough so that you can see the stuff behind me. And uh, yeah, because of that, you can't ever really see my shirts, but I swear I was wearing a Mario shirt this time. Look, there he is, he's right there. He made it in the video on, his, on my shirt. I did it. I try. I try really hard for you guys. No, I swear nobody notices. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more, and be sure to use the links in the description to nominate your own episode. And thank you to all of our Patreon members, Aspen, Arrow, Sid, Genio, and Lura. Boil.